Welcome to Minerva. I'm Sandy and today we're going to do a sew along for the Yates coat. This chic urban style coat is perfect for the chilly weather just to take a little bit off the edge. It's a nice length, it's a bench warmer length and I'm going to take you step by step through the instructions on how to turn this pattern into a fabulous coat. So let's take a look at the supplies you're going to need. And don't worry because I'm going to list them all down in the description below so you don't have to take notes on that. First off, you need Grainline Studios Yates Coat Pattern. The pattern comes with this fabulous book. No more little sheets of paper floating around. This book is very detailed and easy to follow and we're going to go through it step by step. The other thing that you're going to need because this coat is a uh, double breasted front with no buttons. It has snaps. So if you're a little worried about making buttonholes or sewing on buttons with long shanks for a wool coat, no fear. Big snaps and you're done. So it has a nice clean front look without all the buttonholes on it. New needles are always a must, particularly if you're going to um, start a new project with something like a wool that has some good heft to it. And obviously you want a really good thread and we have the Gudemann's thread which is absolutely perfect for this project and the color matches our fabric. Gorgeous. So let's look at the fabric. The best. The piece de resistance. Eh? This is a wine colored boiled wool. Isn't that going to make a beautiful coat? This color looks good on almost everybody. So I think this is going to make up absolutely lovely. We need a lining for this coat and we have chosen a jacquard, a woven jacquard. It's a paisley print, very shiny. You know, and the purpose of the lining is so you can get the coat on and off smoothly. So you have a nice silky lining. So that allows you to move the coat over the clothing that you have on underneath it. And of course, we need a really good sturdy woven interfacing. That's important to keep our coat uh, with some structure, to give it some structure. And while we're talking about fabric, I just want to mention this gorgeous poly crepe. This is also um, on the website. It has a lot of body and it makes perfect blouses. And again, I will put all the details about the fabric down below in the description box. The next thing you need to do is to measure and determine what size you're going to make and cut out your fabric, your lining, and your interfacing. So I'll be back with all my pieces cut out. All right, let's take a minute to explore the Yates coat pattern from Grainline Studios. This is a super chic urban coat. It's got a great length. It's kind of a mid-length. It covers everything you want to keep warm. And some of the features that the coat has is this double-breasted feature that's enclosed, that's closed with snaps. So there's no buttonholes on this coat. So if you have a little nervousness about putting buttonholes in a wool coat, this is the perfect coat for you. It has this really nice collar. It's all top stitched, hidden pockets here along this seam line, and then uh, top stitched hem on the sleeves and the bottom of the coat. So those are all really nice details. The sleeves are a two piece sleeve. So if you haven't done a two piece sleeve before, you will love them. They're absolutely beautiful. So it's a pretty simple pattern. It's very straightforward. It's listed as an intermediate level pattern, but I think with the sew along, if you're an advanced beginner, you certainly can pull this off. You just go slow and take your time. On the back, we will find that it talks about the techniques involved. You learn to sew a straight seam, set in sleeves, sewing a notched collar, and inserting a lining. So those are all maybe new techniques to you, and we're gonna explore every single one of them in detail through this sew along medium to heavyweight coating fabrics such as melted, boiled, or felted wool, and then a rayon lining. So we have all of that and we're absolutely going to line it. You need thread and you need um, snaps for the closures. It gives you your body measurements so you can determine how much fabric you need to get and you need to get fashion fabric and a lining and a fusible interfacing and then some snaps for the closures. So when we open it up and we take everything out, we have this really nice little booklet which is great because it's so much nicer than having pieces like flying all around. And one of the things that you want to look at is the is this very beginning page and it has the same thing as the back. It has the body measurements and the fabric required, but it has this finished garment measurements section. And this is where we're actually going to determine exactly what size we're going to make. 
Now my suggestion to you is to choose a size for the finished garment and then make a test garment. And when you make that test garment, all you need is the backs pieces, the sleeves, and the front pieces. You don't need to do any of the finishes. You just wanna make sure that the circumference is right, that the length is right, that the sleeves fit okay and the armhole is okay. It's, it's more a matter of making adjustments before you cut into your expensive fashion fabric. So when you buy your wool, at the same time, just purchase a couple of meters of a inexpensive fabric that is the same weight uh, you know, like a heavyweight muslin or a heavyweight cotton or even an inexpensive wool that you find in the, um, in the uh, discount bin. And then just make that up so you can make the adjustments to the inexpensive garment fabric before you cut out your really good fabric. Just make sure to transfer any, any changes that you make. So we're gonna consider that with our garment, finished garment measurements, which takes into account ease. So the difference between the body measurements and the finished garment measurements is ease. And everybody wears their garments a little bit differently. Some people like their garments a little more closer to the body. Other people like more room. So this is how you're going to determine what size you're going to make. And we're gonna go through this booklet page by page, step by step, very carefully, so there won't be any questions in uh, the, making pro the making process of this Yates coat. In addition to the booklet, you're going to find all your tissues and they have in this pattern, it goes from size zero all the way up to size 18 in one pattern. So you have everything all in one place. So the next step is to cut it out. All right, as you can see, I have all my pieces cut out. I have all of my lining pieces very neatly cut out. I love that the the tissue has separate pieces for lining. I think that that is so helpful. So my lining pieces are all cut out and I like to leave the tissue with the pieces as I cut them out because I'm going to have to go back and mark them. I'm not a big fan of clipping. I think that that uh, dis destroys the integrity of the seam of the garment. So I would prefer using a chalk or some kind of marking pencil or even an old fashioned tailor's tack but make sure that uh, whatever you use comes off. You don't wanna be using like ink and then have it bleed through. And the other tip I wanna point out to you is that when I cut pieces out, as soon as I take them off of the cutting table, I put a pin on each piece on the right side. So for this lining, which is a beautiful paisley, it could be very easy to switch around the right side from the wrong side. This way I've pinned both pieces on the right side so I know right away which side is the right side and I don't have to futz around with it and waste time. So it takes a second to pin them, but certainly it saves me a lot of time in the long run. I also do the same thing on something like this wool, which really makes a difference because this wool is really hard to tell from one side to the other, but you want the whole garment to be uniform. So putting a pin on the right side of all your pieces as you cut them out gives you the opportunity to make sure that you have everything going the exact same way. The next step you have to do is all your interfacing. And I wanna make sure that when you do that, you take a scrap and some scrap interfacing and test it and make sure that everything works okay before you actually go and use it on a piece of your garment. This interfacing is great. You put it on your ironing board and a damp cloth on top of it, and then you put your iron down and one of, and you hold it for 12 seconds. And one of the things I want you to notice when you put your iron down, you put it down and you count to 12. Then you lift it up and you put it down again. You don't slide it back and forth. You don't want the interfacing to slip and slide and move. So it's an up and down motion, count to 12, up and down motion, count to 12. There's quite a bit of interfacing in this because it is a coat and it requires quite a bit of interfacing. I did notice in the pattern, there were two little mistakes and I'm sure that they're aware of them. But when you interface the back section, this interfacing piece here is 22, not 23. And then this piece, it's the, one of the lower skirts. These the skirt front, or the lower part of the jacket in the front. This piece of interfacing is 21, not 22. So uh, don't let that confuse you. But those were just two little boo-boos that I found and, and very easy to figure out when you're looking at the pattern. And I'm sure when they do the next rendition, they'll fix that. I'm sure that they've been, they are well aware. 
So we are ready to start sewing. My interfacing, my pieces have all rested. They need to rest for 30 minutes flat. So I've covered the whole table with them. They're all set to go. I would suggest that you set aside a good two hours to trim out all your tissue, to cut all your interfacing, to cut your uh, lining, your, your fashion fabric, and then in addition, apply your interfacing. interfacing. So that's a two hour project. It's a good solid two hours. You wanna set that time aside where you won't be interrupted, where you can have all your pieces and you can concentrate, which is really important when you're cutting out all these pieces because your fabric, you want your, your fabric to be cut correctly and you wanna make sure that you do a good job. This is the foundation for the whole garment. So this is really important that it's done well, that the interfacing is done well, everything is cut according to plan. So take your time with that. But now we are ready to get started. I'm pretty excited about that. We are going to work our way through the book and we are on page eight. And the first thing it talks about is the key, the fabric key, and it shows you that a, this is important when you're looking at the graphics on the pattern, that this is the right side of the, of the fashion fabric, the wrong side of the fashion fabric, the a wrong side of the interfacing, the right side of the lining and the wrong side of the lining. So that will make a difference when we're trying to interpret these visions down here, these drawings that they have. Also, it tells you to apply the fusible interfacing. We have done that. And there's a big note here, and this is something that's very important. All seam allowances are half inch unless otherwise noted. So you wanna make sure that whatever the designer had in mind for your garment, that that's the, the seam allowance that you use if you use something bigger, your garment won't come out to the right size. And if you use something smaller, obviously it will be too small. So we are good to go. We are going to work on step two and we are going to start to assemble our coat. This is really exciting. So the upper and lower back pieces, sew the upper and lower back pieces together along the, along the waist seam line, right sides facing, Grade seam allowances and press towards hem. So we're going to, because my pattern pieces are all together with the tissue, we want to open them up, make sure that they're marked the way that they need to be marked. And then we're going to take the upper back, which is pattern piece three. And we are going to sew it to the lower back, which will be pattern piece four. So we are going to sew these right sides together with a half inch seam allowance. So when we pin, I like to pin one side together. These are the right sides are together on this. Pin one end, then I'm going to pin the other end. And obviously these should meet perfectly. If they don't, then we have a problem. And once I've pinned both ends, then I work my way out from the middle. You certainly don't need a lot of pins in this, but you know, depending on how comfortable you are, I would use five at least, right? One on each end, one in the middle, and then you can split. That's a pretty good seam. Now I'm, I'm making a size 18 because that was perfect for my model. And one of the things I wanted to mention is that the pattern grading on this pattern is excellent everything on my model fit perfectly. Sometimes the grading goes off a little bit, but I'm really anxious for you to see this on her because the measurements were exactly right on. So my compliments to the drafter. All right, so I'm gonna go sew this seam for a half inch at a half inch, and then I'm gonna come back and we're gonna talk about grading the seams. So here is my back. I have sewn the upper back piece to my lower back piece. And the next set of instructions says to grade the seam allowance and press towards the hem. So the reason you grade the seam allowance, this is a heavy wool and there's a lot of bulk here. So the goal is to reduce some of that bulk as we um, construct our garment. And we're going to press towards the hem. My hem is down here. You can see my interfaced hem edge down here. I'm going to press this 
towards the hem. So I want to grade or trim back this bottom seam. So it makes a difference on which way you are actually going to press your garment, which piece you want to grade, right? If you had all this bulk when you pressed it, you would see it coming through and there would be kind of a lump. So carefully, we're gonna take our scissors and trim this bottom edge. So we don't wanna trim both of them the same because that would give us the same bulk. The idea is to reduce the bulk and to have different levels of seam. All right, so we're finishing up trimming our seam here. And you need to be very careful that you don't cut any other part of your garment besides the seam, that's really important. And I'm just trimming off, yeah, it's a half inch seam, so I'm probably trimming off about two eighths of an inch, right? I just trimmed that off. So now when I go to press my garment, there's much less bulk. You want to, when you press your garment, and this is wool, so you want to use a press cloth. You don't want to put your iron right on it. We're going to press it flat first. We're going to press this flat first. So steam cloth, iron, right? Then we're going to open it up and press it towards the hem. Pressing it flat first sets your, seat, your stitches into your seam, into your fabric, and that will give us a nicer, crisper seam. So I'm gonna go press this, and we're gonna go look at the next step. Now look how beautiful that seam is. So you need a lot of steam with wool. When you're pressing wool, you need a lot of steam. You need a press cloth on top. You also, wool can stretch, and with steam, you can manipulate it and move it around. So I'm to be very careful that when you steam it, you're not stretching it, and that you're just making this seam nice and flat. But look at how beautiful that is. So our back is together in one piece. So the next thing we're gonna work on is the front. So I'm gonna set this aside. We're gonna move on to step three. Matching notches, so the pockets to the lower fronts using a 3 8 inch seam allowance, and they want you to grade the seam allowance. Now this is, I want you to take a look at the pictures because this is really important. We went back and talked about the coloring. So this white means that that is the front of the fashion fabric. And this gray with the dots means it's the back of the lining. So we're gonna sew them front, right sides together. So the front, lower front piece is piece two. And I have marked my notches with chalk. And then I'm going to take my pocket piece, which is piece, piece 18. And I've also marked the notches on this piece. You can see just a little, just a little notch right there, just with chalk. You could use a uh, tailor's tack or whatever, whatever marking tool works best for you. And I also have the pin in my piece. You can see, so I know right away which side is the front. I'm going to apply this pocket piece to my front. I'm gonna make sure my notches line up. And at this point I can take this pin out now because I don't need it. And I'm gonna do the same thing to the left front. I'm going to match up, match up my notches and pin them in place. And it's important that they match because you have that dip. The pocket is already attached to the front. So we wanna make sure that they match well. Now I'm going to sew this seam, 3 8 of an inch per the instructions. And then it says to grade the seam. So I'm going to trim down the pocket lining a smidge. So that is step three. I'm gonna go ahead and do that and we will be back for step four. All right, my pocket is sewed on. One of the things I want to mention is the key, one of the keys to making a really professional, high-end retail looking garment is to make sure that you clip your threads. And because this thread matches so well, you can't see it on this side, but let me clip this one. With these threads hanging out here, they make a garment look messy. So you wanna make sure that every time you sew a seam, you clip them close to the seam. And, and I start and stop, you know, just a smidge, 
couple stitches in and out. That's all you need just to tack it down. And then you can clip those threads without any worries. All right, step four, press pockets. So this one I have, this one's been graded. Press pocket and seam allowance up away from the hem edge. So we know this is the hem edge down here because it has the interfacing in it. Edge, edge stitch through all layers from edge to edge of the pocket side seam line to anchor the pocket linings and seam allowances in place. So we're going to edge, we're going to press this. We're going to press it flat, press it up, and then we're just going to do a little stitch here to hold this in place. And that is step four. We are on our way. All right, look at how beautiful that stitched down. All right, isn't that gorgeous? So here's the thing, when you buy beautiful quality fabrics, you're sewing and you take your time, your sewing comes out absolutely gorgeous. This lining is so nice to work with. I mean, the wool is gorgeous. And of course, wool is any kind of natural fiber is, is very, very uh, easy to work with. But sometimes linings can be difficult. Let's say this lining is not, it cuts beautifully. It's still slippery, but it's not sliding all over the place and it holds a seam absolutely gorgeously. So love this lining. Now we're on step five. Sew the upper and lower fronts together. So this is my lower front along the waistline seam and pocket edges with right sides facing. Grade the waistline seam allowance and press towards the hem along the lower edge. So we need our front, upper front piece, which is piece one. And we're gonna take one at a time. I like to lay things out in front of me because I find that it is very important for me visually. So here is my, I know this is the center front because this is the part that has the interfacing. You can take a look at the back. We've interfaced the hem here and then we've interfaced this front piece, right? And of course, this is where my pocket is. And then here is my front piece number one. You can see this is that funky looking piece with this, this tail on it, which is essentially the pocket. So I'm going to sew these right sides together. So here is my lower front. Here is my upper front. And I am going to pin them again at one edge, pin them at the other edge. And you see how nicely our pockets line up? How beautiful is that? And then I'm just going to fiddle with them so they land exactly where we want them. I'm gonna pin this pocket. We are going to sew across here, down here, all the way across, up here and back. We have to pivot here because we're going from here to here, right? I would like to put a little back stitch there just to give me give myself some security. And on the pattern piece, you can see that there are dots for marking where we're going to stitch. I'm going to flip this around so it fits. There we go. And just put a little pin because I'm doing the 18 in the size 18. I'm going to put a little pin in that circle and I'm going to take my marker and just mark a little X there. So I know where to come around for my pocket. So I know now I'm gonna stitch half inch seam allowance, stitch to here, to this X, take just a, one back tack, turn, take another back tack, and I'm gonna stitch all the way off. And then I'm gonna get back on and I'm gonna stitch across here and I'm gonna stitch all the way off. And I'm gonna get back on and I'm gonna stitch up here, back tack a smidge, turn, so when you turn your fabric inside your machine, you need to have your needle down 
So I stitch to here. I make sure my needle is sunk into my fabric. Then I can lift the presser foot up and turn my fabric so I can finish sewing this seam. I would prefer to sew off and down at the bottom here on the pockets, you can sew off because you get a much crisper corner when you sew off. But if you sew, well, you have to pivot if you back tack once and then pivot and back tack once again and then sew off, you'll be fine. So we're gonna take this to the machine and we are going to stitch this up. All right, we're going to do a little stitching here. I know it's not a lot of fun watching me sew, but I want to show you this technique for back tacking. So my machine is set up for a half inch seam allowance and I'm going to sink my needle. And I'm gonna sew to that X. I am gonna back it up just a smidge. You wanna make sure that your fabric isn't like hanging off of your machine because it will pull on the machine and it will affect your stitches. You also don't wanna go over your pins. All right, so I've reached the X. I'm going to back it up once, one stitch, and then I'm gonna go forward one stitch and I'm going to leave my needle in the machine. I'm gonna lift my presser foot and spin my machine around, my fabric, sorry, I'm gonna spin my fabric around so I can finish sewing this pocket. One stitch, that, that was two. I'm gonna back it up to, that gives me a nice secure corner. And think about that, this is a pocket, you're gonna be putting your hands in there, so you wanna have a little extra security is not a bad thing. So with this edge, I'm gonna stitch right off because I can. stitch across the bottom. Get rid of all those little tails. You don't want those hanging around. Stitch back up the other side of the pocket until I get to the X. All right, so I'm at the X. I'm gonna do one back tack, go forward one, sink my needle, lift my presser foot, and turn. I'm gonna go one stitch in, back up one, and then finish the same. careful while you're sewing. The wool is, wool is stretchy and you want to make sure that you're not stretching it out of shape while you're sewing. All right, and there are my beautiful corner seams, all right? very secure. And then also my edge seams down here have this really nice square. So I don't have to worry about them being a little cattywampus. So we're gonna do the other side and move on to the next step. All right, let's talk a little bit about pattern pieces. As I use them, I fold them up and put them in a Ziploc baggie. It's almost impossible to get everything back inside that little pattern packet that it comes in. So I prefer to use a Ziploc baggie. That way I don't have to crumple my pieces and I know where they are when I need to go back and use them if I need to remark something or if I have a question about uh, the pattern piece. So in the Ziploc bag, they're not floating around my studio and then I also know exactly where they are when I need them. All right, so we have sewn the front pieces and we have our handy dandy little pocket. Look at that, how cool is that, right? That little pocket that we sewed together with the lining and the 
front piece. Isn't that interesting how that comes together? And it's actually just the right size. I love it. So we need to finish sewing this. We need to grade the seams. We've sewn this. We need to grade the seams and press towards the hem. So we're going to grade this inner seam and then press everything towards the hem. So I will be back once that's finished. All right, we are back. So I trimmed this under seam when I sewed the lower front to the upper front and pressed it really nicely. Look at how beautiful that looks from this side. So here's the thing about pressing wool. Once you press it, so we're gonna press it flat, right? And then we press it down towards the hem because that's the requirement. And we're gonna turn it over and look at the other side. Then we're gonna press this side because we wanna make sure that the seam looks really nice. And if you use steam with a press cloth, then let it rest on your ironing board for a couple of minutes until the steam comes off and that helps set it. Wool is kind of a funny animal and it, it's absolutely gorgeous. I mean, look at how beautiful this seam is and this pocket, right? How wonderful is that? So it's, it's one piece going down the coat, which is an ingenious uh, design. And then we have that really nice lining on the top so that keeps it from being bulky and it makes it feel nice. And we had stitched that down earlier. So now it's not gonna go anywhere and you almost can't see it. It's this little hidden gem in your coat, little secret pocket, just to keep your hands warm. It's just the right size to keep your hands warm. All right, we are making progress. We are moving on to step six with right sides facing each other. Sew the two fronts and the back together at the side and shoulder seams, matching notches and seams where necessary. Press seams open. So you press them open to alleviate all of that extra bulk. So we are going to start with our back piece because I like to lay everything out in front of me so I know that I'm sewing it correctly. All right, so here is my back piece. These are the shoulders. I'm gonna let this dangle down the edge here. So we have our full back, but we wanna start with the shoulders. That's really important. So this is the right side of the back facing up. And then I want to align my two, cause you don't wanna sew them on the wrong way, right? I want to align my front pieces the way they would look if my jacket was laid out flat. So these are all right sides up, right? These are my, and these shoulders align. This is the center of my jacket. This is the back of my jacket. So I know that when I sew the shoulder seams and side seams, I'm gonna be showing, sewing them correctly. So I'm gonna flip them over so they're right sides together. I'm gonna pin this shoulder. This is exciting. This is when, after you sew these, this is when you get to try it on and see how your get a peek at how your glory is. So we're gonna flip this one over also and pin that in place. Now you can see, I'm just gonna give it a little shake. Now you can see, all right, that this is the front and this is our front our shoulders, our armholes. So now we know that the side seams are going, we're gonna be able to sew those up. And again, I like to pin at the top, <clears throat> excuse me, I like to pin at the top, pin right at the top and then pin at the bottom. And in this case, you have that center seam that goes around. So we wanna make sure that that is matched up perfectly. So we wanna pin there because we don't want to have a crooked line on the side. We want that to be uniform all the way around. So then you can put another pin in between or two if you feel like you need two pins, feel free. So there's our side seams. So we're gonna go show, sew the shoulder seams and the side seams. We're gonna press them flat and then we're gonna press them open. All right, so now that we have our beautiful coat all sewn together, it is time to do the sleeves. So we are on step seven, 
and it says, sew the upper and under sleeves together with right side spacing, making sure to match notches, press seam allowances open. So here we have piece five, which is our upper sleeve. And we're gonna open these up so they are right sides facing up because we have our little pins in them so we know which side is the right side. And then we have our undersleeve which is piece six and we're going to match the right sides of these sleeves to the right side of the upper sleeve. And we're gonna put a pin up here at the top and we're gonna go down to the hem edge and put a pin down here at the hem edge. And then we want to work our way from the middle. This wool is so beautiful to work with. It just does exactly what you want it to do. So we have that side pinned. And obviously this piece is smaller. So we're going to pull the other side over and match the edges. So we're going to pin the hem edge. We're gonna match up the top edge and pin that. And then pin this in the middle. Make sure we're in the middle. There we go. And we're gonna sew these seam allowances with a half a half inch seam, and then we're gonna press them open. All right, so we're gonna do both, seam, both sleeves. We're going to stitch them and then uh, press the seams open, and we'll be ready for the next step. All right, I sewed up my sleeves and they sew up and press the seams open. They sew up beautifully. So that sleeve is done. And then the next requirement, which would be step eight, is to run two lines of basting stitch around the sleeve cap at 3 eighths of an inch and 5 eighths of an inch between the front and back notches. So I have notches here and I've run two rows of stitching and you run them at 3 eighths and 5 eighths because this garment has a half inch seam allowance so you want to be able to pull them out afterwards and you want to also make sure you leave some tails here because you need to be able to pull them to fit the sleeve cap to the garment All right so that's step eight so now we're on to step nine Ooh, this is big progress with the right sides of the coat and sleeve facing each other so i have my coat here here's the front of my coat here's my sleeve and I have this sleeve, and I know this sleeve goes on this side because of my notch matchings. There's a single notch in the front and double notches in the back. Align notches. The side seams of the coat will match the underarm notch. So there's a notch down here. There's a notch down here. I, I marked it with chalk, and that's gonna match my underarm. And then there's a notch at the top, and that's gonna match my shoulder seam. So when you're fitting a garment sleeve, this part, this under part down here, needs to be a one-to-one -one ratio. You don't need any extra bulk or fullness under your arm. So we wanna fit this first, and then fit this top seam here, pin the, pin the marking to that shoulder seam, and then we're going to pull on the strings of the basting to make this sleeve fit this armhole. So if you, Lay your sleeve out, and I know this is how this sleeve is gonna go on this side. Let me turn it around so you can see it. Okay, so there, does that make, there, now it's oriented for you. So here is my armhole of my garment, and here's my sleeve, and I'm going to attach my sleeve to my garment. This is on its right side, and this is on its right side. So I'm going to open up my garment and m grab these two right sides together, the top of the sleeve and the shoulder seam, and I'm going to pull that through. 
So now I have my shoulder seam and I'm gonna look for that mark that I have that belongs to the top. And there it is. And I'm gonna pin that. And I want my sleeve to be down. So I'm going to put the pins on the top on the coat part because we need to fit the sleeve to the coat so there's some easing and the feed dogs, if the larger piece is on the bottom, the feed dogs will help ease that piece in. So now that I've pinned the top, I'm going to take that mark that's on the bottom sleeve and I'm going to pin that to my underarm. So there's my mark and I'm gonna pin that to the side seam for the underarm. And this can take some fiddling, it's okay. Now, up to these marks here on either side, we're going to have a nice smooth one-to-one -one ratio. So we're gonna pin that first because we, want, we don't want any gathering there. We want that to be smooth and flat. So we're gonna to go to one side and then back, come back and go to the other side. Now what we have left we need to fit with those basting stitches. And it's not too bad. You can see I have this space needs to fit on here. So I'm just going to grab both of those basting stitches and give them a little tug. Not much, just enough to ease it in a little. should do it and then I'm going to pin that down and you know don't underestimate the power of your fingers and working this you have a concave seam and a convex seam coming together so you need to have a little bit of fabric manipulation in there but that went together very smoothly right and we're going to sew this. And after we sew it, before we do anything, we're gonna open up the sleeve, turn it right side, and make sure we don't have any crinkles in there. Because if we have a crinkle, we need to take it out and fix it now. So I'm going to fit in both of my sleeves and stitch them. And when I come back, we'll have a coat that really looks like a coat. And we'll just have the lining and some finishing details to take care of. All right, this is the very exciting bit. We have our coat, it's in a big lump. We've sewn the sleeve in, and what I want you to do is go around the other side and check and make sure that you don't have any bumps and lumps, because this is where you're going to need to fix it right away. You don't wanna wait once you get the lining on. So that sleeve, looks absolutely beautiful. That's the back. And here's the front. There's the front. So I'm gonna go in and take out my basting stitches. I'm gonna pull those out. And I'm gonna press the sleeve. I'm gonna press the uh, seam allowances towards the sleeve. And that will help with this cap. This cap is absolutely gorgeous, the way that fits on the sleeve. And what the sleeve, pressing the seam allowance into that cap will support it a little bit, All right? Now, after that, the instructions say this is a really good opportunity to try your coat on. Before you try your coat on though, because this is wool and it can stretch out of shape, I want you to run a row of stay stitching around the neck edge. And this will keep this stay stitching, and it's just a row of stitching within the seam allowance. I did about 3 eighths of an inch. You're not gonna see it, but what it does is it keeps this from stretching out of shape. Because if you try this on two or three times, which you may, you invariably are going to stretch this out. And the stay stitching will help keep it secure. So when you put the collar on, this hasn't changed shape and your collar will still fit. So yes, press your sleeves, try it on, prance around in it, take a picture, right? We are almost done. We are so close. It's just details and the lining you will be amazed when you get this coat finished. It is such an easy, well-drafted pattern. All the pieces are going together beautifully. So now we're gonna tackle the collar. So I'm gonna put my coat aside so I can fix the finish with the sleeves and we're gonna look at the collar. So we are on step 10. 
Step 10. With right sides facing each other, sew the under collar together along the center back seam. So the under collar is in two pieces, and that is piece eight. And we are going to, here's my pin, so I know that's the right side. So we're gonna place them right sides together, and we're gonna sew this back seam. And then we're gonna press the seam open. And then we will be back to pin it to the upper collar. All right, here is my under collar. I have sewn it together at the back seam and pressed it open. And now we're going to work on step 11. With right sides facing, align the outer edges of the under collar and the upper collar. The outer edge is the straight edge with no notches and stitch around the outer edges, grade the seam allowance. So uh, the upper collar is piece seven, and this is a one piece collar. Typically, your under collar is a little bit smaller than your upper collar, and the reason for that is so you can roll those seams, kind of roll back, so that is important. So this, we're going to align the edges. With right sides facing, align the outer edges of the under collar and the upper collar. The outer edge is the straight edge with no notches. So we're going to pin this straight edge. And when you're pinning, make sure that you pin these this, this seam that you've sewn flat. I like to put a pin on each side of the seam allowance and that way I know that my I'm not gonna get a bump in there because that's just gonna com complex compound the thickness of all the, uh, the seams. And stitch around the outer edges. So you're also going to stitch these seams here. And they show you as pivoting. Again, I'm not a fan of pivoting. I will sew this all the way off and then I'm going to sew each one of these edges separately. That way I'm going to get a much cleaner corner. So I'm gonna go ahead and stitch this. All right, so here is my collar sewn together. And you can see, obviously my under collar is a little bit smaller and that's good, that's what we want, right? We want this difference in here because we want the under collar to pull the seam allowance towards the upper collar. Now they want us to grade the seams and clip the corners. So I'm going to clip the corners at a diagonal. and I'm gonna grade the under collar seam. So I've clipped my corners, I've graded my under collar seam, and now I'm gonna turn the collar right side out, this is step 12, and press making sure the seam line rolls towards the under collar. And then we're gonna baste this bottom edge closed uh, at around a quarter of an inch. So let me, let's talk about turning these corners here. One of the things you wanna do is you want a really nice sharp corner. We've sewn off and on, so we have the opportunity to get a beautiful corner. We're going to fold one side seam down then we're going to fold the other sides, the other seam down and reach our thumb in between the two collars and hold the back of it with our fingers. And we're going to push that point through. Look at that beautiful point. So let's do that again. Let's see if I can do it with my right hand because I'm left handed. So I'm going to fold the side seam down, and I'm going to fold the top seam down, and I'm going to, there's a lot of fabric there, I'm going to stick my thumb inside, and I'm going to hold that point with my thumb from the inside and my four fingers on the outside, and I'm going to flip it through. Sometimes you have to do it a couple of times, but that's fine. 
but that is a pretty nice corner, right? And these are the kind of details that make your coat look like they are high end. Now, we're gonna press this. Before I stitch it, I'm gonna press it. I'm gonna take it to the iron and I'm gonna press this seam open so I can get a nice roll on it. But then I'm going to pin it so it matches the edges of this collar, the upper collar. And what that will do in the process is it will force the edge of the seam to the back so you don't see the seam from the front of the collar. So that, and then once I do that, I'm gonna baste through here. So when we come back, our collar will be ready to attach to our coat. Pretty exciting. All right, we are going to attach the collar, and this is pretty exciting. This is a, a bit of the coat that makes us feel like we're actually making progress, right? So here's my coat, here's my collar, and you can see that by bringing these edges together, it has rolled the top edge just a little bit back towards the under collar, which when the collar stands up, gives you a beautiful look. So right now we are going to attach the collar to the, co to the coat opening. So we are on step 13. Pin the collar to the neckline of the coat with the right side of the coat and the underside, that's the side with the seam, the underside of the collar facing each other. Align the notches. The ends of the collar will meet the notches at the V in the lapel. That's this right here. Stitch along the neckline with a half inch seam allowance. Do not press the collar yet. The shell, set the shell aside to assemble the lining. Whoa, exciting stuff when we get to the lining. Now, one of the notches that they don't have in here is the center back. And I like to start putting my collars on at the center back. So I'm going to take the two shoulder seams of my jacket and match them up so I find the center back of my jacket and I'm just gonna put a pin there. So now that's marked with a pin. Let's put it so you can see it. That's marked with a pin right there, all right? Because that's going to align up with this center seam in the back. So that's where I'm going to start. I'm gonna align that center seam of my collar with the center of my back. Now I know it's balanced as I go around. And I am going to pin just like everything else we're going to pin this pin each edge so i'm going to pin this edge right at the notch there we're starting to get like hefty amounts of fabric so be gentle with your pins <laughs> they are going to start to bend and balk at uh, the amount of fabric that we have in our pins so we have a center pin and the two end pins and then again we have a convex and a concave seam so we need to just kind of walk our way around the collar. I remarked all of my notches with chalk because obviously as I was going through the construction process, they came off. And, and they're guides, they're essentially a guide to get your pieces to go together. Uh, this just fits together beautifully. And now you can see why we stitched that under collar and upper collar together because now it's one unit and we don't have to futz with three levels of fabric. Essentially, we just have two. Now we're gonna go to this side and do the same thing. I'm gonna walk this along. Pinning as we go. Um, one of the really nice things about wool is that it's malleable. There we go. So there's our collar. We're gonna stitch that down and do exactly what the instructions said. We're gonna set this aside for now and construct the lining. Pretty exciting. Look at that. That collar looks great. It's all sewed on. One of the things I want you to do before you set this aside is flip this collar up 
and check underneath and make sure that you don't have any crinkles or little bobbles or anything that's going to affect the integrity of the back of the coat. So this looks great. I'm gonna hang this up on my body form and move on to the lining. Wow, this is really exciting. We have gotten to the lining process. We are on step 14 and it says, begin assembling the lining by sewing the center back lining pieces together, press seam allowance open. So the center back lining, I have all my pieces here with their tissue. That is the front. Those are sleeves. So this must be the center back. This is the back. This is piece 15. And I'm going to sew the center back seam and press it open. So we'll put these right sides together. This is when I'm really happy I have the pins in the right side of the fabric because it makes it super easy to know what is the right side. I'm gonna pin the top, pin the bottom, and lay it nice and flat. So this is a little slippery. So you wanna put a few pins in here because you wanna get a decent seam. I wanna make sure that it's all even and balanced. This is gonna seem like sewing air after sewing that wool. So check your stitch length, make sure your machine's happy. So use a piece of scrap and check your stitch length to make sure your machine is happy switching back to this very lightweight fabric. All right, here is my lining. Isn't that beautiful? Wow, so pretty. So we've sewn our center back seam and we've given it a nice press and we are on to step 15. With right sides facing up, fold the back pleat by bringing the two outside notches in to meet the center back, stitch in place a quarter of inch from the neckline. So here are my notches, and I want kind of an inverted pleat. So I'm going to bring that notch right up to the seam. Just this, it isn't big, change but what it does do is it adds a little extra room in the lining for movement so I'm just gonna bring that notch it's fiddly it's a little fiddly so I'm gonna bring those two notches into the center seam and what that does is this gives just gives the lining a little bit of breathing room as you're putting the coat on and off. And then I'm just going to tack this down so it's actually one piece. Now, step 16. Fold the back neck facing in half and notch the center back at the lower edge. So here is my neck facing, that's piece 10, and I'm going to fold it in half. Again, I don't like cutting through my fabric, so I'm just gonna put a pin in here instead at the center back, all right, on the lower edge. Match the edges and center of the back neck facing to the lining, pin in place, ease the rest of the lining and back neck facing together. Stitch along the seam line, grade, clip, and trim the seam allowances, and press towards the lining. So again, we're gonna stitch this on this way. So I have my center back now, because I put a pin in there. Oop, I have a little thread. So I'm gonna match that pin up to the center of my back. And because I'm easing the lining in, I'm going to put that on the bottom. And then I need to match this edge. And I need to match this edge. And there is going to be some fiddling here for sure. And now I need to fiddle in the rest of that lining. And 
essentially this just takes a little time. You just need to take your time, use some pins, You know, it's interesting we take flat fabric and turn it into something that has volume and shape and circumference and sometimes it just takes a little work. So that went in pretty easily. I'm going to go this side. I think this pattern is exceptionally well drafted and as you work your way through it and just go carefully the pieces go together beautifully. Look at that, perfect. All right, so I'm going to take this to my machine and it says stitch along the seam line, grade and clip the lining seam allowance and press the seam allowances towards the lining. Okay, because this is a curve, you wanna take your time go around and check the back. You can open it up this way and check to make sure that we don't have any little fiddly bits. There's our pleat that belongs there. Little fiddly bits in this section. All right, and we give it a good press. I seem, this seems to lie pretty flat for me. If you have issues with it lying flat, you can clip these seams back here and that will open it up so it will move back and forth. So what we would do is just put a snip to, but not through, to the seam allowance, but not through. And you can see, without even pressing it, that on this side, it's already lying much flatter before I press it than this side because I haven't clipped this side yet, but this side's clipped and see how beautiful that lies. That's really pretty. So I'm going to cl finish clipping it. I'm going to give it a good press and then I'm going to run a row of top stitching a quarter of an inch from the edge so that it lies nice and flat. And as you think about your garment, this is a coat, so you're going to be taking it off and on. So you want the inside to look as beautiful as the outside because you are going to be taking it off and on. So look at how flat and lovely that is, right? We just did a row of top stitching there, and that holds everything nice and flat in place. So we're going to set this aside. We will need it in a few minutes, and we are going to assemble the front. We are on step 18. Align the front facing and the front lining with right sides together, matching the ends and notches. Sew from the shoulder seam down to the last notch near the hem of the garment. Press the seam allowances open and edge stitch along the facing side of the seam from the shoulder seam to the notch, anchoring the facing to the facing seam allowance. Here are my facings, piece nine. And then my front lining would be piece 14. And you can see on piece 14, right down here, there's a notch. That's the notch that we're going to sew to. So I'm just going to remark my lining to make sure that I know exactly where that notch is. Let's take these one side at a time. We are going to line up our facings. One facing, this actually goes this way, and this facing goes this way. We have mirror image, mirror images. Here's our neckline, and we're going to sew the lining to the outside of that. So the right side of my fabric, right side of my coat is up and I'm going to put the right side of my lining up here. They're like, prince. it's almost like a princess seam. Right. 
Okay, because you need this, you need this fashion fabric on the inside of the lining so when your coat opens up, you see this fabric and not the lining because the collar will peel back a little. So we're going to start with this one. I'm going to pin the right sides together at the shoulder. And I'm going to pin them together at the notch. So I've remarked that notch to right there. And my, my, my interfacing was a little long on this side, so I'm just gonna cut that off. So it's not distracting. All right, so I have pinned this to the notch that I have remarked, so now I know that that is where I need to stop sewing. And then I'm going to match any notches I have along the way. This has a little bit of a curve, so it requires a little bit of manipulation with the pinning. Not too much, considering all the convex, concave curves that we have worked on in this coat. This one is minor, but it does require some little fiddly work. There we go. So that one's done. Now I'm going to do the other side. Alright, I'm going to stitch these, press them, and top stitch them. I'll be back. Alright, look at that. How beautiful, huh? It lays so nice and flat. And the trick to getting that is again clipping the seam allowances. So we there's a curve there, and if you clip through, but not to your seam, you're going to be able to press this so nice and flat. So once it's pressed flat, you just do a pretty row of top stitching to keep it in place. All right, that's exciting. That is step 18. So step 19, we're going to sew the front and back linings together at the shoulders and side seams, just like we did with the coat. And then we're going to assemble and insert the sleeves just like we did with the coat. So that is going to be a pretty quick and easy process. So we'll come back together when it's time to do the hem. We are coming to the end of our coat assembly, which is really exciting. So I finished sewing my lining together, put the sleeves on. So the side seams and the shoulder seams. So essentially it's a mirror image of the coat. We have our facing, that's our fashion fabric, and then the little facing in the back of the neck, that's the fashion fabric. When I sewed the sleeves on, just a quick little tip, I did not gather them. The, the easing is very minimal inside the sleeves, and since it is going to be in the lining, we just need the fullness. We don't need it to be absolutely perfect. So I sewed this bottom half that's one-to-one, -one, and then I eased with my sleeve facing down on my machine, and I pinned the very top up here where the notch and the shoulder seam come together. And for this part of the sleeve and then the front part of the sleeve, I let my sewing machine feed dogs ease the uh, sleeve into the armhole opening. Of course, you can add the basting stitches and pull it and fit, fit it that way, but this way works perfectly well for a lining because there isn't a lot of ease. It's not a big puffy sleeve. If it was a big puffy sleeve, that would be a different story. All right, we are on to step 21. Now it says, sew the side seams front of the front and back hem facings with right sides facing each other press seam allowances open and grade to a quarter of an inch. So here, I've done one already. Here is my uh, back hem. This is piece 12, the back hem facing. This is cut on the fold, so it's a big long piece. And then piece 11 is the side hem facing or the front hem facing. And we've stitched it and I've pressed it and I'm just going to trim it to a quarter of an inch because we just don't need all that extra bulk in there. So I'm gonna quickly trim this to a quarter of an inch. Now I want to tell you 
you want to consider how nice and even this is, right? This needs to be straight where you've sewn these edges. And there's a lot of fabric here, it's very thick. And your machine will tend to push the top piece away and you'll end up with something that is kind of off kilter like this in your seam. And you, you really don't want that. You want a nice even edge all the way around. and You don't want to trim it and that creates a whole nother set of issues. It's certainly easy enough to do. This one's pinned. So I've matched up my edges and I've pinned and I'm going to start sewing here. I'm gonna put my needle in here where this pin is and take a stitch or two forward and then stitch backwards and then stitch over it again. And that eliminates this edge being under the needle and the machine pushing this piece forward. So what you end up with is a really nice even edge on both sides. So that's my tip for today. I'm gonna to finish sewing this side and then we are going to move on to step 22 where we start lining the coat. All right, we are getting ready for the final construction. And I am so excited to see this coat all completed and I'm looking forward to actually seeing yours. So you need to make sure once you get it finished to post it and tag us on, um, on your posting. So make sure you tag hashtag Minerva and hashtag Minerva makes. We are on step 22. With the right sides together, align the bottom hem facing with the hem of the coat shell. So I have my coat shell here. This is my bottom hem. This is the front of my front seam of my coat. Matching notches, center back, and side seams. The edge of the front facing will meet the notch of the hem of the coat. Stitch along the bottom of the facing from one end to the other, grade seam allowances. And then step 22, uh, sorry, step 23, you press the facing and seam allowances down away from the coat, under stitching along the facing. We'll go through under stitching in a minute. So this section of the coat is actually piece two of our pattern. And you can see here at the bottom of piece two, there is a notch there. And you need to, you may need to remark that if your markings have come off as mine did. So I remarked mine on my coat and that is where my facing is going to start and stop. So front sides to right sides together. I'm going to start here. So I don't start here at the edge. I start at that notch and I'm going to pin this all the way around the coat, matching my side seams, all of my notches till I get all the way across the bottom of the hem to the notch, the corresponding notch on the other side of my front piece here. So I'm going to pin that, stitch it with a half inch seam allowance, grade it, and press it. I'm going to finish trimming this off, grading the seam on the facing uh, part of the seam, and then I am going to understitch it. And the purpose of the understitching is to keep this from rolling. So I'm going to run a bead of stitching right along the seam line on the facing, capturing the seam allowance underneath. So essentially what you're doing is making a sandwich with between the seam allowance and the facing so they don't flop around and get bent and cause rumples. So that's gonna take a few minutes. You need to go slow. Just like with applying this facing, you know, at some point, some junctures here, you're going through four layers of fabric some of them that have been interfaced. So it's a lot for your machine. Just take it slow, and then when you're done, give it a really good press, and it will be fine. Use a press cloth and use some steam, and you'll have a great seam. It'll be fine. And then, like I said, we're gonna understitch it so that will help compress it and keep it together. I want you to see how beautiful this coat seam is. Look at that, right? Gorgeous. This fabric is so wonderful to work with and you guys are learning really nice tailoring techniques. So this has understitched and you can see now that my seam allowance is attached very cozily to my facing. So it's not going to flip around and at some point this is going to end up being an edge and it's going to give me a nice clean, beautiful edge. All right, so we finished the facing on the bottom of our coat. Our next step is 
Step 24, we're gonna do the facing for the sleeves. Align the two ends of each sleeve facing and sew together to create a circular tube. So this is piece 13. This should be the last piece you have left with pattern pieces. Put that one in my bag because I'm done. I'm going to sew this circle together. So I'm gonna put the two edges together and I'm going to sew across there and I've sewn this one already. And again, remember, start your needle in a little far, you know, half inch maybe, and take a stitch or two and then backtrack and then come forward and you're gonna get a really nice finished edge, which is what you need for these seam facings. So I'm going to finish this one. We are going to attach the sleeve of facing to each sleeve of the coat shell. Now if you look at this piece, you can see that this is a wider edge. It's got a little bit of a curve to it. This wider edge is what you're going to attach to the base of your sleeve. So you are going to, once you've made those little circles, you're gonna move on to step 25. Attach one sleeve facing to each sleeve of the coat shell. And here's my coat shell. With a single seam from the facing, that's this one, aligned with the back seam of the sleeve. So here's my shoulder, here's the back of my coat. This is my back seam. Remember, we have a two-piece sleeve. Here's my sleeve facing. And I'm taking the larger part of the circle and I want this part to align with this edge of the sleeve. So I'm going to slide it onto my sleeve, the facing, and line up the seam from the back of my sleeve with the seam on my facing. I'm gonna throw a little pin in there. And I'm gonna pin that all the way around. Now the facing might be a tad smaller because we have this interfacing on here and it hasn't grown any where the sleeve might. So you can fit it on there. You might have to fiddle with it a little bit, but we don't want any rumples. So take your time with that. So that with a half inch seam allowance all the way around. Then we're gonna grade the seam. So again, this one's done. We're going to take away this seam, the, this portion of the seam allowance that belongs to the facing, and we're going to press the facing away from the sleeve, right, which I have done. And then I'm going to go around and understitch this again, where I'm stitching the facing to the seam allowance. So I wanna make sure that there's a good press there and that the seam allowance is facing towards this part of the, that part of the sleeve facing. So when I understitch this, I catch it all in there and it's all going the same way, all right? We're going to do that for both sleeves. And then we are on to step 26, which is bagging our coat. We are so close to the end. I am so proud of you for staying, sticking this out with me. This is really quite a project and you have done an amazing job. All right, we'll be back very shortly. All right, for this last bit, I wanted to give you a bird's eye view because we have this huge piece we're working with now. Our coat is almost together. It's super gorgeous, right? And we're going to bag the lining to the coat. But first, I just wanted to mention the sleeve. We did an understitching where we stitched the facing and the seam allowance together. These little buggers are tough, right? Yeah. You think it's a small seam and it causes a little bit of stress because um, it's small. <laughs> it's hard. All right, so you persevered and that's, and that's good. So here is our coat and it looks absolutely gorgeous and we are on step 26. With right sides facing, stitch the shell and the lining together along the front lapel, on the front facing lapel. So that would be this this part of our coat, right? Here's our collar, this is our front facing lapel, and neckline. Leave the hem of the lining loose for now. So we're going to start here, way down here, where this hem facing is, we're going to start here, and we're gonna go across, and we're gonna sew off, we're not gonna pivot. And then we're gonna come back on, and we're gonna sew up to the facing, all the way up to the facing, across our collar, 
and down the other side. When we get to these points, we have to pivot on this internal point. There's no way to avoid that. But on these points, to get a sharp, really nice sharp point, sew off, and then come back and sew on. All right, so here's my beautiful lining. Pin this edge up here, right up here at the top. Start there. And we're going to go down to the bottom down here and pin this. This way we don't have to fight with anything because we know that's where it's supposed to be. And then we're going to pin this over to the, the hem facing. Put a few pins along this seam. Now I'm going to turn this so I can pin the collar section. And our collar stays down. We're going to close the collar on the inside so the collar stays down underneath. We're going to match these indent notches and match our shoulder seams. There's a lot of fabric to sew through there, so you may have to go and help your machine go through it. Just go really slow and help your machine go through it one stitch at a time. So I'm going to take my time pinning this all the way around. Make sure my sleeves are all tucked inside. Pin it to the other lapel and all the way down to the hem here. So essentially we're stitching the perimeter of the coat. Up, the, up one side, across the top, and down the other side, but we're gonna leave the hem open for now. So I'm going to pull my machine back out and stitch this up. Wow, that was quite a project, right? Sewing the lining to the coat shell. Before you take the next step on, on step 26, the second half, which is clipping and, and trimming the seams and doing all of that, I want you to turn it inside right, just for a minute, and check and make sure all of your seams are fine. You haven't grabbed anything mistakenly uh, from the wrong, from a, a different piece that shouldn't be there. You have any little bumps or creases or rumples. So I am going to do the same thing with mine. I'm gonna start at one edge and I'm just going to go around, particularly around the neckline. You shouldn't have any problems going up and down the face, the front of the jacket. But around the neckline, I wanna make sure that my points are good, that my collar, see now here, my collar hasn't been caught in quite as well as I would like. So I'm gonna go back and fix that. I'm just gonna go back and fix that now because I have access to it. If I wait till after the coat is all finished, then it's gonna be a problem. It's in there, it's just not in, there's a little tiny edge there that I can see. So I'm just going to take that little tiny bit out and repin it and rework it and make sure that it's fine. Go through the rest of the facing here. This all looks great. Let's see how this collar looks. This collar looks pretty good. All right, and the other thing you wanna think about is matching up your collars. Those look exactly the same. That's really important because you don't want to have one collar that mistakenly got smaller than the other. Same thing with the points on your lapel. You wanna take a look at those. I'm not gonna pull them all the way out, but I am gonna measure them to make sure that they're close, right? I mean, you can, you can get in there and pull them all the way out. You just have to stuff them all back in again. But that, I'm happy with that. I'm happy with the juncture and the way that looks. And I'm just gonna run down here and make sure that I don't have any clips or crinkles and look at this last bit. So that looks good. I'm gonna fix that little section of the coat collar and then I'm happy with everything else and ready to move to the next step. I'm gonna take a look at this collar. See, it kind of slid. You can see where it just slid a little bit. So you can see where it just slid a little bit down there. So I'm going to just unpick that and pull it back up again. And then I'm going to finish step 26, which is grade the seam allowances, do the best you can, 
clip the neck edge because this neck edge here is curved so we want to clip it so the fabric has a place to go and then trim all the points so we're going to trim off the little points here and we're going to trim off the little points here and clip a V into the lapel and that will give the fabric some release. So we're gonna do all of that before we move on to step 27. All right, we have finished trimming and clipping our seams. One thing I did wanna mention about the uh, collar, collar, when you're clipping this around the neck edge, you don't have to clip through all of that in the same place. You can see I kind of staggered my clips across the seam and that will um, help you actually get your scissors through it. They don't all need to move at the same time as long as they all have freedom to move. So we're gonna get ready to do the hem. We have this beautiful hem facing that we put on. So we're on step 27. With the coat still inside out, align the lower edges of the back facing and the lining matching seam lines and the center back. So we're going to do our very best to match seam lines with the lining and the hem facing. All right, we're going to go across the back and do that. The folded seam allowance at either side of the lining will meet the end of each side of the hem facing. All right, so remember when we stitched this uh, lining, when we stitched this lining, we didn't stitch it all the way down. So we have a little seam allowance there and that seam allowance will meet the edge of our hem facing perfectly. Now, stitch along the facing and lining from one edge to the other. So we're gonna stitch along this bottom edge here, matching them up. You will notice this causes some gapping and there is a little gapping in there on the side here between the lining and the facing. This is normal and will create the hem right, pleat. So we have finished our hem. Looks great, the coat is completely bagged and sewn together inside out and we can't get in it. But we'll fix that in a little while. Right now we're gonna hem the sleeves. And this is a tricky process to uh, conceptualize if you've never done it before, but it is an amazing way to do sleeves. So what we're gonna do is we're going to use the diagram and we're going to lay our coat out exactly the way it says in the diagram. So it has the lining. This is the hem seam here, my lining, and I'm going to pull out each sleeve. One sleeve, one lining sleeve. I'm going to pull out the other lining sleeve. My lining sleeve. All right. And then I am going to pull out my coat sleeves, which are here somewhere. Here we go. Looks like a big lump of fabric, huh? one sleeve and here is the other coat sleeve all right so coat sleeves center bottom coat sleeves sticking out from either side there we go so we're going to read step 28 Lay your coat out in a configuration similar to the illustration below. This will prevent the sleeve linings be from becoming twisted. And we certainly don't want them twisted because then we have to go back and undo them and we do not want to do that. <laughs> it is not fun taking something apart once it's already been put together like this. All right, step 29. Now I'm just gonna spin my coat around so you can watch me put one sleeve together so I have my two sleeves. There's one sleeve here. All right, here's the center bottom of my coat. Here's my coat sleeve. Here's my lining sleeve and they're spread out. Now we're gonna follow the directions. The process is wonderful and you'll be so proud of yourself when you get it done, but just take your time, all right? Turn the edges of the sleeve lining up about two inches. So here's my sleeve lining, and I'm going to turn the right side out at about two inches. It does, you don't have to measure it, it just has to be about two inches. All right, so my sleeve is coming out now. This is 
essentially my hem we're going to work on. So we've done that. We want to make sure that we keep our eye on this back seam of the sleeve. Insert the cuffed lining into the sleeve. So we're going to, this is my back seam and this is, this is my back seam of my sleeve. This is the back seam of my lining. All right, so we're going to insert the cuffed lining into the sleeve. So now you can see why we have that two inches there, right? Because we're gonna slide that right in and we're holding on to the lining that we folded up, that two inches that we folded up. Matching the seams and making sure neither the coat nor the lining is twisted. Stitch the two layers together and repeat for the other side. So I'm going to match this back because I was holding on to the seam, the sleeve seam for the back. I'm going to match those together. And now I know when I take it to my machine and I'm just sewing the edge, that edge that I folded up, right? To the hem facing of my sleeve. I'm gonna sew, and it's weird, you kind of have to push the sleeve lining out of the way as you go around the machine, obviously because you're sewing two full pieces together. If you're at all worried, just baste them. Don't stitch them. If you're, if you're at all worried, do this process, baste them together. When you turn the coat right side out, you can make sure that they're the way they're supposed to be and then turn it back and just stitch them really quickly in the machine if you're at all worried. And then that way, if they're twisted, you can undo them and make them go the right way. But this method, as long as you lay everything out and you do it the way that they show you, it should be fine. You shouldn't have any trouble at all. Wow, you are probably looking at this big lump of fabric and it doesn't look like a coat, but it will in a minute. So we finished sewing our sleeve all the way around so you should have something that looks like this, right? The seams line up front and back or the underarm seams line up with the lining. And the next thing that they ask you to do is to open up a seam in the sleeve about eight to 10 inches. This is a big coat. So we're going to literally birth this coat and turn it inside right. Before you do that, I want you to go all around the perimeter and make sure that you took out all of your pins. All around the sleeve edges and the hem edges, everything, all your pins are gone. And then you can set your pins away because you're going to dive into this coat. So step 30, take one of the sleeve linings and open one of the seam allowances approximately eight inches, about halfway up the arm. If you've interlined the coat or are using a particularly thick fabric, you may want to open it closer to 10 inches. I did about 10 or 12. Open it as, as large as you think you're going to need. So my opening is, that's probably, that's a good 10 inches. It's a good solid 10 inches. Step 31, to turn the coat, start pulling the shell slowly through the hole in the sleeve until the entire coat is right side out. So, here we go. <laughs> All right, and we are going to pull the coat section by section through this opening. It's like magic. beautiful sleeve hem. Let's see if we can find the other one.
amazing, right? Here we go. Some fluffing, some folding required at this point, but we have turned our coat. Whew, that was a project. All right, it's probably time to take a break. <laughs> but we have a few more things to do and then our coat is finished. So you wanna take some time going in and turning these corners, making sure that they're nice and clean. The same way we turn the corners for the collar, folding, folding. Down here, these front corners, we wanna do the same thing, kind of reach in, get our hand back in through that hole and fold it. Right. It has a beautiful point. And, and obviously you have some pressing and folding to do, a little fluffing and folding, but we're gonna go around and fix all of our corners to make sure that they're beautiful. Now the next thing, the next step, step 32. After your coat is turned, phew, right? Reach through the opening in the sleeve and grab each of the underarm seams, bring them out into the open. So let me show you how to do that. So we're going to reach in to that sleeve armhole that had the opening. So this is my opening and I'm going to take my underarm seam for my sleeve right here and my underarm seam for my fashion fabric coat sleeve and I'm going to do a chain stitch. What we want to do is to make sure that these stay together and they don't float apart. So this kind of anchors them. You just do a very loose one inch chain stitch to go around to anchor these two puppies together and do the same thing on the underarm for the other side of the coat for the other arm and that will be step 32. All right, our coat is almost done and I know we're super excited to wear it but we want to spend just a little bit more time making sure that our finishes are beautiful. So the first thing we're going to start with is pressing the hem for the bottom of the coat and the sleeves and stitching those. This wool presses so beautifully that you shouldn't have any trouble getting it, a gorgeous clean edge. So what I have done is pinned across my bottom and my lower edge and stitched it from the wrong side. That way I know exactly where I'm stitching and I can see that the length of my stitches now and the width of that hem is absolutely spot on perfect and I didn't catch the lining while I was stitching it. As long as your stitches are balanced, your, your bobbin stitch and your top stitch are balanced, you shouldn't have any trouble stitching from the wrong side. So stitching from the wrong side is perfectly fine and it's so much easier for something like the hem. And again, I'm gonna do the same thing with the sleeve. You're gonna take it to the iron, press it, pin it, and then you can use this as a guide along your machine to stitch it. Just make sure that you don't have any rumples on the other side, so check when you're finished and be very careful as you sew it. And this actually is a gorgeous hem technique. It's so beautiful when it's finished. And your coat, if your coat is open, you're going to see the inside of the coat. So you want it to be finished impeccably. So after I finish sewing both of my sleeves and my hem, then I'm going to stitch, I'm going to press really well the outside of my garment and stitch that. The best way to press this is to take it to the ironing board and you want to make sure that you're not getting any rolls inside of that seam and you can actually pin this right down into the ironing board. Right? And it will hold and then you can hit it with the steamer, you know, your cloth, your press cloth and then steam it and you will end up with this beautiful straight pressed edge and then it's super easy to just run a top stitching all the way around that determine how wide you want your top stitching to be it, it doesn't obviously it's not going to be this wide but it should complement it you might i'm thinking three quarters of an inch is probably what i'm going to try somewhere between a half and an inch because you have a lot of weight there a quarter of an inch top stitching isn't going to work you need something with a little bit more bulk all right on to top stitching all right, our top stitching is all done. We top stitched the bottom hem, looks absolutely gorgeous. We top stitched the sleeves, and I used the same distance on the hem as I did on the sleeves so they look uniform. And then we top stitched 
around the whole outside edge of the coat. I used a half inch here because there's so much bulk on the seams, but I want you, while you're doing your top stitching, to consider any little threads you have hanging around, make sure you take those off and get rid of them because we don't want any threads hanging from our coat. Also, as you're sewing the bottom front, you want that seam to roll more towards the back or the inside of the coat. But as you approach the top here and the collar, you want the seam to roll the other way because this collar is actually going to be open this way. So you don't want to see the seam. So there's a transition here, but in general, that's kind of the look that you're going for. And then we top stitched all around the collar. And the other thing I want you to remember is when you have this in your machine, it's very heavy. Try to keep it up on a table so it's not dragging on your machine because that will affect the stitching. All right, the very last thing we need to do for our coat is to mark and sew on our snaps. So we're gonna take piece number nine, which is the front facing piece and overlay it on our jacket. One of the things you wanna make sure when you overlay it is that you conclude you include the seam allowance when you're laying it down. So you leave a half an inch there and a half an inch at the top because we want to make sure that we're marking our snaps in the right place. If you lay this on the edge, then your snaps will be too far in and your coat will be smaller than what you anticipated. We don't want that to happen. So we're going to place our pattern tissue piece over our coat and mark the spots for the four snaps on both front sides Make sure that when you overlap it, it's overlapping in the correct direction. So your snaps are facing, your back snaps and your front snaps are on the right side. So when you close your coat, it closes from right to left. All right, this is the last bit before we have our final coat. So excited. Woohoo! Wow, we are so proud of you. You've made it to the end of this sew along journey for the Yates Coat from Brainline Studios. We hope you enjoyed the journey along the way and actually learned a little something. The pattern that we used from Grainline Studios went together like a dream. And this beautiful boiled wool is structured and soft and perfect for this coat. It's suited for the clean lines of this urban chic coat. And you can tell that our model really likes it. She's very happy in the photos. Now, we learned some beautiful tailoring techniques along the way, like a two-piece sleeve, how to turn a collar's edge and make a beautiful point, and hemband facings. I'm not sure how many of you have used those before, but that's definitely a high-end technique, and the look is absolutely stunning. Of course, then we struggled with birthing it. That was kind of an interesting process, but once we got it out, didn't everybody like try it on? Even before you pressed it, you just had to see what it looked like, and I'm sure it looked gorgeous. On behalf of the team at Minerva, I wanna thank you for joining our Yates Coat Sew Along journey. We are so looking forward to seeing your version of the Yates Coat. Be sure to upload it to Minerva when you're finished. Minerva is the perfect place to share all of your wonderful creative makes. So until next time, I'm your sewing instructor, Sandy. Happy sewing. Bye.